I've been using Excel Math for about 15 years in my classroom, and though far from perfect, I find that it's uh, the strongest math program because it spirals the concepts and allows the kids to really have some good mastery learning. All right, let me have uh, Lions come on down to the floor. Uh, I've been doing a small group instruction in my class for several years now uh, to be able to reach the kids at their own ability level. I teach a four or five combo class and currently I have three math groups in my class. I've got a, a high fifth grade, a, a lower fifth grade group, and a fourth grade group that I meet with every single day. Problem that's a little tricky. You're going to want to watch out for those. I call them stuff for money problems. All right. So on this first problem here, um, go ahead and after you've got it done, then reach consensus with your neighbor. All right, go ahead and, and uh, do that. In the middle of my instruction, uh, in order to give the kids feedback, once I've taught them the concept, I have them try some of the problems. And, and rather than me being the one that tells them if they're right or not, the kids confer with each other. And if they disagree on their answer, they have to explain their answer to each other to the point where they change uh, the other person's mind or they change their own mind. Uh, based on that discussion. What you're seeing here are the uh, consensus partners that the kids are paired up with each day. The students are shuffled every single day so that they're always working with different partners. And what they do is they meet with that student, the other student, to go over yesterday's math work uh, in what we call reaching consensus. Rather than the old method of uh, swap and correct or collect and correct, the students get feedback on their work by having a discussion uh, with, the, uh, with their consensus partner. Whenever they find that their answer is different, one of the students has to change their mind and then therefore change their paper using a pen uh, for accountability purposes. So what you're seeing here is a group of three. If we have an odd number of kids, then uh, one of the groups has to have three people and they're going over the, their math from the day before and comparing answers and, and what you're seeing is that they disagree on one of the answers and they're trying to come to consensus on it and have somebody change their paper. Okay, what he's trying to say when are you are supposed to add three plus three because it's Okay, class. These are the consensus redos for today. Twenty two, twenty one, eighteen. In order to hold the students accountable to actually match up their answers each day with their consensus partner, uh, if they do not match their papers and turn them in, the following day they get those papers back and they have to redo their consensus work with uh, yesterday's partner. It's not a whole lot of fun for the kids to have to do it again, so it, it gives them the incentive of uh, doing it right the first time. It's cutting into their time where they could be getting the next day's math work done. They usually end up with a little bit more homework because of that. And so uh, I also charge them tickets if they don't uh, match up with their, their consensus partner. So these two girls here are going over yesterday's consensus papers that they turned in that did not match. The other thing that I do with the kids to uh, hold them accountable is that I have them redo any of their math papers that uh, they, I find that they, they're not understanding uh, what, they, what they turned into me. So here a student has uh, a redo that they're working on at their desk and uh, they have to fix it and then turn it back into me and I double check to make sure that they've got it at that point. Because when, it has, when, it, when you go on the clock, it has 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35. So it, it, it would say in one hour it would be 35 minutes after. So, and I look at, because it's 6 o'clock, I would go over here and it would be 7. So I, th I think it's supposed to be 7 right there instead of an 8. And then I think this one's wrong too. And put that one, that's that one. I don't know. Did you have any readers? No. So, explain the process of what you just well, if I don't, I don't have readers, so I do my Excel until we come down to the floor.
We didn't show right here either. Maybe it's like that 200 we tried. Let's try that again. And when I uh, have the kids redo their work, if uh, they just get to the point of total frustration and they're, they're just not getting it, then I pull them aside and I work with them individually or in this case with two different students that are having trouble on the same type of a problem and do a little bit of reteaching with them. Uh, when I do reteach the kids, I try to uh, ask them as many questions as I possibly can rather than telling them the information and get them to discover on their own uh, where they're going wrong and how they can fix their work. What does that tell you? What information do you get from that? That is... So the answer is 500, so this answer is 366? What does that have to do with this? That means it's in here. Why? Tessa, do you know any of this stuff? Because it doesn't have a remainder. Okay. Meanwhile, the uh, students are also working on their independent practice, which they're able to do before they even have their lesson for that day because most of what they're doing is review from uh, previous lessons. What are you doing right now, Raiden? I am changing improper fractions to proper fractions. Is that pretty easy? No. <laughs> Class? Yes? I'm going to announce hoop shot. 23, 5, 20, 1, 11, 30, 9, 8, 10. <laughs> Can someone get the ball for me? I'm too small. <laughs> To help the kids uh, to keep the quality of their work up and to prevent them from just scribbling any old answers down and then going to consensus and changing them all with pen, uh, I do have this positive incentive that if they get 100% on their work, they get to take a shot at the basket and get a chance to win a small prize. All right, Cheetahs, come on down. Cheetahs, come on down to the floor. So basically what's going on in my classroom each day for math is that I'm teaching a lesson to one group while the other two groups are reaching consensus. When they finish reaching consensus, they go to work on their redos. If they have no redos or once they finish their redos, then they get their math for that day and start on the next day's guided practice. Good. What about an X? Ten. Okay, what about a C? Okay, Tigers, come on and down. And as I finish with each group, I call down the next group and they stop what they're doing, whether they're in the middle of doing their guided practice or redos or consensus. They come down to floor for the floor for instruction. Another component of my math teaching uh, each day is learning to do some problem solving. These students here are working it as a group to solve a kind of a big problem. The students are also given a, a cheat sheet that they use to a four-step problem-solving method that they go through. And uh, Raymond here is going to explain to us how uh, they go through those, those steps of uh, problem-solving and work together as a group. Well, the first one is understanding the problem, basically, to see, like, what to, like, if, like, the coins are, like, 10 cents each. So you have to understand how many things you get for each thing. And then choose an operation strategy which is that uh, you can either draw a picture to make it easier or, or guess and check or, or look for a pattern or so see like if okay she got okay so then she got four dollars okay so then what about wait, so, Danny so she got eleven quarters two dimes and one nickel yeah yeah that adds up she got well, wait. Danny Wait, Look, Danny got it? But Eleven? Danny, no. no, that's what Gina got. Oh, but okay. Danny, he got 30 minutes, so he got... Once again, uh, the students reach consensus on their answers by meeting with the members of the other groups and uh, conferring, finding out if they have a different answer. If they do, then they must have a discussion until they agree. And then ten half dollars and four quarters for Barney. 
um, 10, okay, for Danny, 10 nines equals $1, and then Wait. four half dollars is $2, so $1 plus $2 equals $3. That's simple. <laughs> so four half dollars? Yeah. Okay, and then for Gina, um, 12 quarters because 12 quarters yeah, I got is $3. Yeah, it's like one nickel. Oh, okay. Well, our answers are the same, just in different coins. Really? Let me see your coin then. Because eight, I put eight quarters and two half dollars. Two half dollars? Eight quarters equals two dollars and two half dollars equals a dollar. Okay. And that's three dollars. Um, so well, it's just like different coins. Yeah. Different coins but the same answers. Uh, we're like in different coins but the same answers. How many coins? Um, 14. So you got 14. I got 14 coins. I got. Three. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, huh? Yeah, you're right. You have to use 14 yeah, coins right. exactly. Yeah. I, I made myself. A I made these them. By asking the students to reach consensus, they learn good critical thinking skills as well as communication skills. Ten dollars. And four and a half dollars. Four and a half dollars, yeah. Okay. And then for Gina, what did you get? For Gina, I got twelve quarters, two half dollars.